There we go. So yes, to anyone who is viewing this is what we would normally do on a Saturday afternoon, but due to stuff and because I had personal stuff that I had to take care of and because Beastmaster was spending his birthday weekend, which is good. I'm still going to be doing this, except it's not going to be called every Saturday afternoon. It's going to be called a Saturday night because it's basically a Saturday night where I live. Of course, I am the host, Don Chaos. You guys probably know maybe what we're going to talk about. Of course, we will answer some of the viewers' questions that you guys ask that we talk about, or if it's probably just going to be me talking about this. But yeah, one of the topics, of course, of this vidcast is we are going to be talking about the 14-year anniversary of the Wraith of Shangri-La. But some of you guys could probably tell. It's hard to believe this album came out 14 years ago. I was 12 years old when this happened, when this album came out. I was in sixth grade. Probably one of my favorite eras of ICP. Because, you know, they had all these different dope face paint designs. This was actually one of my very first Insane Clown Posse shirts I ever owned. You want to know how poor I was? This shirt was actually used and I bought it at a thrift store. And I've had this shirt since I was 12. And it still fits me to this day. So yeah. Little history for some of y'all. Yeah, just that whole era from what I know. I know they did a nationwide tour, I believe. They didn't they go to like Australia and New Zealand for the Shangri-La tour? Or was it just Australia? You know, at this time in 2002, up until this point, ICP had been around for apparently 10 years. Now, apparently, they've been around for 26 years, depending on how you do the math. <laughs> probably late, depending on where some of you guys are checking this. If you're Eastern time, you're probably way ahead of us because... 8.40 here. It's basically almost 11 on the East Coast. And if you're Central Time, you're just an hour ahead. You're almost 10 o'clock at night. And if you're Pacific Time, like California, you're basically an hour behind us. So in California, it's only 7.40. It's still pretty early there. Or if you're New Zealand Juggalo guy, you're really far into the future, basically. Where he lives. So yeah. I'm still going to talk about this a little bit. Wait and see if anyone joins in. And if not, I guess I'll be doing this by myself. But if you got it. So yeah. The Wraith of Shangri-La. What can be said about this album? I mean, I've done a review like this in the past. But this review is the 14 year anniversary. I mean, this, you could say, was ICP in their prime with some people. Like, at this time, like I said, they were around for 10 years. And it took for 10 years, they were telling the story of what was leading up to this album. A lot of people didn't know where their career was going to go after this. A lot of people thought, because they always said in their music, after all six have risen, the end of time will consume us all. And no one knew what that meant. No one meant, does this mean after they release this album, is the world going to end? Or are they going to retire? No one knew at that time. Just a lot of the tracks off this album are just monumental. Like I said, this album holds a very special place in my heart. 
I still bump this to this day. This is actually labeled as one of my favorite ICP albums. It's actually one of my, on my long list of favorite psychopathic albums. This, like I've also said, is one of my favorite eras of them because every time their face paint was different. Some people, you could say this was called the Shangri-La era or it was also known as the Diamond Rain era. And this album, you got to see in the booklet, you saw the lyrics or here, like here's some of the artwork. Of course, this is at the time when Shaggy was done in the dreadlock still. For the old school people, that's right, at ICP and AA. This is the album that made some people fall off by listening to ICP. After this, some people thought after this or Hell's Pit is when they really did it. Very monumental picture. Like one of the pictures I think of when anyone should think of ICP when they search up, this should be one of the pictures that probably comes up. Just this whole, all right, you know, it all came to this point, you know, that's time I, Psychopathic Records was getting more established as a label because you had ICP Twisted, then you had Blaze, then you had ABK, then you had, of course, Isham who signed in the label. You had Zug Island, you know, you pretty much, this is when they were under Red Distribution, which you know is owned by Sony, which now they're under Red Distribution anymore. You know, the SV logo. It's just monumental. And this is just one of the main things that we are going to talk about on this album. Like, I want to know stories from you guys. If you were around when this album came out, where were you? And Or if there was, you were at one of the release parties, I want to hear your stories. Whether it be in comments, but I would prefer you to do it in video format. I will get into... Some of the questions that we got for this hangout about stuff that we're going to talk about. All right, let's see here. Let me pull up the questions. I guess I'll answer the questions right now or topics. So, yeah, first one was from Coma Black. So, shout out to Coma Black. Really hope to see you at the gathering next year, man, especially if it's right here in Colorado. First one he asked is, what do I think of the new Lex video? Like, the new one that was called, I don't like your face or something? You'd have to let me know which video, because I'd have to check that. Second one, why is the new Tech 9 video, what if it was me getting a pass, but people have problem with Big Hoodoo's Boom Boom Piggy? I have no idea, dude. My opinion is I love both songs and the subject matter that both songs are talking about because not a lot of people are talking about this or some people are afraid to talk about this topic. But I'm not one of those people that are complaining about Boom Boom Piggy. I love that track and I do love the that Tech 9 video. So I love both. But for those who are hating on the Boom Boom Piggy video, but loving the Tech 9 video and track, well, especially the video. I don't know what to say, but that makes no sense because both songs if, or videos deal with the same subject matter. Except Tech 9's video, I think, goes in more depth. It's looking from both sides of per the perspective instead of just being on one side. I think that's why a lot of people seem to like that one more because it's standing on both sides of the fence. 
and what the serious issue is. Number three, the Hollow Wicked single. What's your opinion? I thought it was pretty interesting. You know, it sounded like almost like a trap beat, but I don't mean this in a bad way. But it also it did sound like a trap beat, but it just it was interesting. It sounded like it was something that would have been produced by either Young Wicked or Seven, which is cool. A lot of people didn't like the beat, but I thought it was good. They thought ICP's voices were too low. I mean, the whole vo reason why their voices were low is they were trying to make their voices sound evil and sinister. <laughs> and Violent J's always made his voice sound like that a lot in the past. So I don't know why some people don't like it. I think the beat maybe threw off people, but it sounded like it was a Young Wicked or Seven type beat, which is cool because, you know, if anyone knows, Young Wicked and Seven, those two come up with some pretty dope banging beats. Whoop whoop, what's that? What up, Ashes? Let's see, what else did Coma Black ask? He asked opinions on the Blase Rose interview with Fago Lovers. I thought it was a really interesting interview, to say the least. It was a very good interview. You know, I think I think the last thing she said at the end of the video had it was a really strong statement. You know, she brought up a very good point. You know, I think I'm glad that she's not letting the hate of people hating on her because of her being a female or woman get to her. Because people were starting these rumors about how she got to the top. You know? And like she said, it's just not some people's taste, you know? And if it's not some people's taste, it's not your taste. But there's no reason to just hate on it. But don't judge other people if they do enjoy it. The whole point of us is we're supposed to be individuals and... A lot of us like certain stuff that other jugglers might hate, you know. We're all different. There's a lot of, I'm sure there's a lot of you, a lot of you, you who's ever watching, have had something that a bunch of other jugglers hated, but you actually really enjoyed. But I thought it was a really good interview. I mean, yeah, it was her real first interview. I think she just needs to get comfortable more with that sort of thing. And who's all going to juggle a weekend was the next thing that she asked. Sadly, dude, I don't think I'm going to be able to, you know, because it is so close to February. If I would have known this more, I would have been able to plan it more, and I would have been chilling down in Florida. Because, hell yeah, we wouldn't want to be down in Florida while it's winter up here where I live. <laughs> but that is dope. And that's going to get into another thing that I'm probably going to talk about this video, but it's going to go into another what if. So it's probably going to be a live what if or just something. That is, I believe Juggalo Weekend has now become the new hatchet attacks, you know, since the whole psychopathic roster has Doned down a little bit. I think Juggalo Weekend is going to be basically the new hatchet attacks. And they won't just have people from Psychopathic or... Thing. They'll have people maybe associating with Psychopathic or... Just... Yeah. I think Juggalo Weekend has become the new hatchet attacks because the last hatchet attacks was... In 2011 or 12, I believe. And it was in New Mexico. And since then, there hasn't really been another hatchet attacks. So I think that's why they're calling it now Juggalo Weekend. Because they do want to make it where it is like the gathering. Except it's going to be just like maybe a two-day event. 
So in my opinion, Juggalo Weekend has become the new Hatchet Attacks, where Hatchet Attacks was for one day, and Juggalo Day used to be a one-day event. Now it's just a two-day event that goes on on the weekend. So that's my say on the matter. And then Gale Freak Show asks pretty much the same question. Pretty much on Gale Freak Show, I answered those questions because you answer the same, ask the same, but I will answer this one that you're saying. New Tech Nine album, The Storm, with Clown Town section without ICP on it. Why didn't he fuck with ICP on his CDs after 10 studio albums and six collabos? No ICP on them. It was ICP had tech on a Hollow Wicked track, Thug. In 2003, Forgotten Freshness Volume 4, Madhouse in 2005, and Scream in 2012. I don't know, dude. That's the ultimate. That's the thing that I kind of wonder, too, you know? Why isn't he doing this? Is it because he says what he says? Is he just waiting for the beat to talk to him? Like, some people don't believe that whole shit that he says about saying the beat needs to speak that artist or group's name for him to have them. I don't know. I really don't know, dude. I really don't know. Some people say at least put Twisted on there. I don't know, dude. I really don't. Yeah, but on that, Ashes, I can't really fully say my whole opinion on Blase. I'm going to be completely honest i can't say my opinion on her because i've only heard one song by her and this is just an ep it's a short little thing it's not gonna you can't base something based off a whole ep you know because it's just few songs that are sometimes preview songs but you never know i can't say any Thing because I've only heard that one song by her that was released into a music video. Haha, <laughs> I buffalo. Yes, buffaloes. Buffalo wild wings. Yummy! Yeah, I mean, of the buffaloes. But yeah. That is my say on the matter. So if you guys are in the chat still watching, maybe leave stuff to just help me get this thing going so I can continue to talk more. Because I'm carrying this all on my own. We have three viewers. So what's up? I mean, I could probably carry this all on my own if I wanted to, but Let's see, do I have any sound effects on here? Troll room? No. There's that. Yeah. Cameraman. Chat. I don't know. I don't know. All right, that's all good. So yeah, if anyone has anything on their opinions on stuff they want to talk about in here, let me know. I mean, since we were talking about the Wraith and the whole Diamonds Rain era, another thing we could say that came out during this whole thing is a lot of people like to get mad at this now is this book was released. I put that on behind the paint. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> God, I hate me.
but there's just but I guess I'll get on the topic of M and E, aka Magic Ninja Entertainment. Let's see what. See so now we got Twisted on label, Blaze, ROC, Lexx Master, Gmoski, Boondocks, and then apparently another artist. That's six acts on the label. So Magic Ninja getting established, which is very good. A lot of people don't are gonna say Psychopathic Junior. Well, your opinion. That's your opinion, but yeah. Boondocks is a very talented rapper, and he deserves this. No, because for a while he does good on his own, but then he eventually falls off, and we don't hear from him for a while. And as we know, he does have a bad health problem and a mental problem as well. So now, let's get on that. Does this now mean, I mean, Twisted has yet to do this with Blaze, with some of the stuff. Does this mean now Twisted or Magic Ninja is going to get the rights to Blaze's old catalog? Which I hope they do do that. Some people may be pissed. But, I mean, it would be cool at the same time, you know. But is now Magic Ninja going to get the rights to Blaze's back catalog and are they now going to get the rights to Boondocks' back catalog? I'm coming to Denver and stealing that shit you got on. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. No, I bought this for myself, dude. Yes, but can you I bought this years ago. I can't remember when I bought this. All I know was it was years ago. <laughs> yes. <gasps> Gosh, who all is viewing this? No one still has joined in on here, as far as I know. If y'all do want in on this, let me know. Let me know. Which one, me or him? I, who is that? This is my girlfriend that I've been telling you about, dude. I don't know if you remember that phone call conversation we had. I think I did mention my girlfriend. <laughs> this chair cannot see both of us. Oh, well. But uh, yeah, yeah, it has been a while. I mean, I was in the, I was in the hangout like the chat on last Saturday. But yeah, it has been. A while. But yeah, dude, like I said, I've just been going through a lot of personal stuff, you know, getting out of that dark place in my life, which now I think I'm fine. I'm out of there, which is good. But yeah. But 
And I think I'm now out of that dark place in my life, which is good. Just staying positive no matter what. Not letting people be disrespectful or rude to me if they want to. That's their own doing. But I'm also helping myself too. Which is good. So who are those other two viewers in there? Make your presence known, you creepers. Hey, this is your own guy, sorry. There's three people watching me and they bring no presence known. <laughs> That's a good thing though. Not three people are known. I will take care of that too. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could play some videos. I don't know. Has anyone even seen the thing that join in on here? Well, there's a few. There's a select few. Because now I figured out how to set up this whole new live stream thing on YouTube, which I'm glad I learned how to set it up now. Now, eventually, I'll be able to do this now whenever I want to, and I won't need to borrow her computer, because I feel bad for you. And now I'm craving peanut butter M&Ms. Me too. After seeing that. And now we're going to here. What do you feel about Lex? I can't stand him. I think Lex is okay. I mean, he does put on a good live stage presence, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Because we saw him with Twisted, and I think he puts on a good live show. Do you remember who that was? Doesn't he? Yeah, he was the one who we saw smoking without his makeup on, and his mic went out. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think he put the, put on a good show. He definitely knew how to work the crowd mm -hmm. and stuff. Like he sounds a good lie. Like he reminds me of a lot of East Coast New York type rappers mixed with the wicked shit, you know. I think he's dope. You know? I definitely can't wait for his debut album, Contact, which comes out this month. So be sure to check that out, guys. 